This is the Gospel Hour, making known to this nation the Gospel of Jesus Christ. Stay tuned for today's message that was preached and recorded by the founder of the Gospel Hour, Evangelist Dr. Oliver B. Green. And now, here with our message, Oliver B. Green. Dear Heavenly Father, lead us now in Jesus' name as we study thy word for Christ's sake. Amen. In John 8 and verse 58 we read, Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Before Abraham was, I am. Now here is the reason for this double verily. Jesus said in verse 51 of this same chapter, He, or rather if any man, keep my saying, he shall never see death. And of course the Jews said, now we know that thou hast a devil or a demon. We know you have a devil. Then they go on to say, are you greater than Abraham? And Abraham is dead. Then Jesus said in verse 56, your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day, and he saw it and was glad. Now they couldn't understand that, neither can the natural man and mind, the natural man, receiveth not the things of God. So the natural man today still cannot understand it or see it. Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day. And he saw it and was glad, of course, back yonder. You remember in Genesis when God promised Abraham that in him, in his seed or through his seed, all nations, all families of the earth would be blessed. Then they said unto Jesus, now notice verse 57, Thou art not yet fifty years old, and hast thou seen Abraham? Now, they could not understand the words of Jesus. He said, Abraham saw my day and rejoiced in it. He was glad in it. And they couldn't understand it, because Jesus was not yet fifty. And Abraham, of course, had been dead for many years. Now, Jesus said, Very, very, I say unto you, before Abraham was, I am. And, of course, then... They did really think that he had a demon, and they took up stones to cast at him. But Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple, going through the midst of them, and he passed by. Now, here is another double verily. Verily, verily, I say unto you, before Abraham was, I am. Now, I want you to turn with me, please, if you will, back in the book of Exodus in chapter 3. And God called Moses to go and tell Pharaoh to let the people of Israel go. And Moses, of course, began to make excuses. And he said, I have an impediment of speech and so on. And then finally, in Exodus 3.13, And Moses said unto God, Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel... And say unto them, The God of your fathers hath sent me unto you, and they shall say to me, What is his name? What shall I say unto them? Now watch it. And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. I am that I am. And he said, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I am hath sent me unto you. I am hath sent me unto you. Now, that is God's name. I mean one of God's names, if you want to name God. Uh, One, of course, his name is Emmanuel, meaning God with us, that Jesus was called Emmanuel and named Emmanuel. And so here we have the instruction that God gave to Moses when he went down to Pharaoh. You tell the people that God sent you, and when they ask you what your God's name is, you tell them, I am. Now, Israel knew who I am was, and we know, those of us who believe the word of God, we know who I am is. Now, Jesus is the great I am. We could go through the New Testament, that is the Gospels, and we could spend much time discussing uh, the I am's that have to do with Jesus in the gospel. But we've already discussed several, and especially in John chapter 6, he said to the same group in verse 48, 
I am that bread of life. I am. So there is the great I am. Now, Jesus is or was, and of course he is today, seated at the right hand of the majesty, but he was in the beginning with the Father, in the bosom of the Father, and he proceeded from the Father, and he came to this earth in a body of humiliation, like your body and my body, sin apart, of course, and he came to bring the bread, I am the bread, I am the water, and so on. Now, to the woman at the well, of course, it is not stated, I am the water of life, but she said, I want this living water, and Jesus gave her the word. He said, I that speak to thee am he. So there it is again in John chapter 4. I am he. I am the Messiah. I am the water of life. Then here, I am the bread of life. Now, Jesus is the bread that came down from heaven, and he said, your fathers did eat, eat manna in the wilderness, and they're dead, but he said, I am the living bread. I am that living bread. So if you eat of me, you will never die. Then in John 8 and verse 12, Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. I am the light of the world. Now, this is the same I am that said to Moses, You tell the people that I am sent you. Now, you know, beloved, if people would stop trying to put God in a test tube and put Jesus in a test tube and analyze them as we analyze the human body and as we analyze other things, if man would stop trying to analyze God and understand God and believe Him instead of trying to analyze Him, men would get along a lot better, nations would get along a lot better, and most of us who are believers would get along a lot better. Now, Jesus was in the the beginning with the Father. Now I said that to drive home this solemn thought, and it is a divine fact. It's not only a thought, but it's a fact. God deals in the everlasting present. You see, God had no beginning. In the beginning, God was already there. God had no beginning. You say, when did God begin? When the beginning began, God was already, and so God is everlasting. And God is not one minute older today than he was 40 hundred billion years ago. And 40 hundred billion years from now, he'll not be any older than he is now. God is eternal. He operates in the eternal present. He is not I was or I will be. God is I am. Now, I know some of you are not going to accept this, but it's the truth whether you accept it or not. The reason believers have everlasting life is not because they live right, do right, or act right. Believers do live right. Believers do act right. We're not perfect and never will be until we see Jesus face to face. We are not sinless as he was sinless. We should be blameless. We should be sanctified soul, spirit, and body. We should live a holy life. Now, of course, you understand a holy life according to the Bible prescription of holiness. And Jesus is our righteousness and our holiness and our sanctification. And when we are committed soul, spirit, and body to Jesus, we're living a holy life. But now here's what I want you to see. The reason I have everlasting life is because I possess... The I am. What do you mean, Mr. Green? Well, here's what I mean. When we're born, we're born of God. We are begotten of God. Now, Jesus was begotten of God. He was God's only begotten Son. And He was born of the Virgin. The Holy Ghost overshadowed Mary. And uh, Jesus was born. He was begotten of God. Now, in James 1, 18, we learn that God of His own will begat us we are begotten of God through the Word, through the Word. Now, watch this very closely. When we are born of God, we become a possessor of I Am. Do you mean, Brother Green, that God lives in us? God lives in us in the person of the Holy Spirit, and the Spirit was in the beginning, just like Jesus was. Father, Son, Holy Ghost were in the beginning. 
Now the Son was in the bosom of the Father. The Holy Ghost was there. And when God brought order out of chaos, the Spirit moved upon the face of the waters and so forth. And there was light and the waters divided and so forth. Now, here's what I want you to see. When we are saved, we possess the great I Am. I am the water of life. I am the bread of life. I am the light of the world. So when we're saved, we have eaten the bread. Jesus said, except you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you have no life. So we eat the word. We assimilate, we appropriate the word. And so the word becomes a part of us. We're born of the word. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. Born of the incorruptible seed. And the word is the great I am. Now, where do you get that? In the beginning was the word. The word was with God and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God, and the Word became flesh. So the great I Am, the Word, God, Jesus, the Holy Ghost, they're one. And yet they are three, not three gods, no, one God manifest in three persons. All right. So I have now everlasting life because the great I Am, or the I Am, abides in my bosom. Well, now, you say, Mr. Green, according to what you've just said, You can go out today and get drunk and gamble and murder and you have everlasting life. Now let me tell you something straight from the Word of God. Straight from the Word of God. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. All things are passed away. Believers don't get drunk. Believers don't gamble. Believers don't murder. Now it might be possible that a believer would be guilty of killing a person, but it wouldn't be premeditated murder. Now, by that I mean you could run over a person in an automobile. You might uh, try to frighten a prowler, and you might kill someone breaking in your house at night. I'm not talking about that. Listen, murder is from the heart. Murder. A murderer murders from the heart, and believers will not hate, because if you hate your brother... You don't love God. First John declares over and over and over again, if you can't love your brother and if you don't love your brother and if you do not love the brethren, you're not born of God. You're in darkness. You're not walking in light. And John eight twelve declares that Jesus is the light. And so we might as well face it. If you are born again, you love the brethren, you walk in the light, and you're not going to murder. And believers do not get drunk. Believers do not gamble. Believers. Church members do. Deacons do. Some preachers do. But deacons and preachers and church members are not necessarily saved. Saved people are born again people. And when you possess the great I am, you will not desire to get drunk. You will not desire to gamble. You will not desire to murder. And I could just keep on going. You will not desire to do these things. Now, if we sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but for the sins of the whole world. Now, that's in 1 John 2, 1 and 2. But believers do not desire or long for or seek after sin. Believers don't. Church members do. Deacons do. Stewards do. Elders do. Preachers do. But Christians do not. So, every born-again believer is begotten of God, begotten through the incorruptible seed, possessor of the Holy Ghost, possessor of divine nature, hid with Christ in God, and sealed by the Holy Ghost until the day of redemption. Hallelujah to his name. Praise God. All right. So he said, I am the light of the world. He that walketh, followeth me, shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Now we are led by the Spirit, Romans 8, 14, and the Spirit leads us into the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. All right, now let's, uh, as time permits, and of course time is slipping, I want us to notice a couple others, a couple more I am's. In John 10, Jesus said, If any man climb up any other way, that is, if any person tries to get to heaven, verily, verily, I say unto you, he that entereth not by the door in the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same as a thief and a robber. Now there's another double verily. We'll study it later. But I want to point out this tremendous I am, and so it was necessary to read it today. Now, Jesus said, If any man climbs up some other way, the same as a thief and a robber, but he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd's sheep, to him the poor openeth, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calleth his own sheep by name, and leadeth them out. Now then, the disciples did not understand. They didn't understand. And so Jesus said, 
or t- said to them in verse 7, and here's another double verily. Then said Jesus unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door. I am the door of the sheep. I am the door. In verse 9, I am the door. In verse 10, I am come. In verse 11, I am the good shepherd. Hallelujah, I am. And look at verse 14, I am the good shepherd again. I am, I am, I am. Praise God, I am. And this is the same great I am that was back yonder in the days of Moses. When Moses said, whom shall I say sent me? And Jesus said, you tell them the great I am, or rather tell them I am sent you. Now, in John 14, and I'm rushing because there is one more that I must mention. In John 14, Jesus said, I'm going away and don't be troubled because where I'm going, you can come and I'm going to the Father's house and I'll come again. And Thomas said, uh, now notice this in verse 3. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am. That where I am. There you may be also. There is the I am. Now, Thomas said, Lord, we do not know where you're going, and we want to come where you are, and we don't know the way. And Jesus said, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. I am the way, the truth. I am the truth, the life. I am the life. No man, no man cometh unto the Father but by me. I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. No man. I am the door. Well, let's begin at the beginning. I am the water of life. I am the bread of life. I am the light of the world. I am the door. I am the good shepherd. I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. The great I am. Now, in John 18, Judas led a band of soldiers to arrest Jesus. And when they came to arrest him, They walked up to him, and Jesus asked them who they were looking for, whom seek ye. And they said, uh, we're looking for Jesus of Nazareth. We're looking for Jesus. Verse 5. Then answered they answered him, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus said unto them, I am. Now, Greek scholars tell us that he is not there. The personal pronoun, he, is not in the Greek. So Jesus said, I am. And Judas also, which betrayed him, stood with him. As soon then as he said unto them, I am, they went backward and fell on the ground. Then said he unto them again, Whom seek ye? And they said, Jesus of nine. He said, I have told you that I am. If therefore you seek me, let these go their way. Now, the great I am, in other words... When he spoke the word, he was the word, he is the word, and the word of God is power. The word of God is dynamite. And so they said, we're seeking Jesus of Nazareth, and Jesus said, I am, and the two words flattened them on the ground. Now hear this. In John twelve forty eight, Jesus said, He that rejecteth my word hath one that will judge him in that day. The word, the word, the word, the word, the word. We will never know this side, the pearly white city, when we sit in that heavenly Bible class. Praise God. We'll never know this side, the pearly white city, the importance and the power of the Word of God. Well, you you just can't separate the Word of God and God. If the Word is not trustworthy, then God isn't. And if God is trustworthy, the Word is. If God is holy, the Word is. If God is powerful, the Word is powerful. Because in the beginning, the Word, the Word with God, the Word was God. And the Word is the great I Am. So Jesus said, if you're looking for Jesus of Nazareth, I Am. I Am. And they knew who I Am was. They knew. They were Pharisees and Sadducees and scribes and elders. And they knew that I Am was Jehovah God, the God of their fathers. And Jesus said, I am. And they fell backward, flat on the ground. Now, beloved, one day out yonder, in the great eternity ahead of us, one day, somewhere, sometime, it may be today, it may be tomorrow, I don't know, it may be a year, it may be ten, I don't know. But one day you're going to stand before I am. And you're going to hear him say, well done, Or you'll hear him say, Depart, I never knew you. 
Now, which will it be? He said, I am the water of life. I am the bread of life. I am the light of the world. I am the door to the sheepfold. I am the good shepherd. I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. Now, will you receive him? No man cometh unto the Father but by Jesus. Receive him and he'll save you right now. Father, honor thy precious word. Honor I am. Honor I am. And may someone receive I am now. In Jesus' name, amen.